Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Grandmaster Games and uh, we are in for another treat a holiday treat courtesy of another favorite player of mine Jose Raul Capablanca the human chess machine Shout out to RRV for subscribing to my Twitch channel for the fourth month in a row great support by RRV and uh, he also gifted a tier 1 subscription to Chess Kudo another viewer on my stream and a solid chess player as well Gina Rook the top cheerer once again with 296 bits last week so a big thank you to them uh, for the support much appreciated and uh, the customary quote people who want to improve should take their defeats as lessons and endeavor to learn what to avoid in the future you must also have the courage of your convictions if you think your move is good make it Jose Raul Capablanca and uh, he certainly played some good moves himself tetty capablanca was a legendary chess player from cuba born in the capital city of havana dubbed as the human chess machine he is considered by many as one of the greatest players of all times widely renowned for his exceptional end game skill and speed of play A chess prod- prodigy he uh, excelled at the game from an early age and it is said that he learned the rules of the game at the age of 4 by watching his father play with friends pointing out an illegal move by his father and then beat his father in the game He became world champion in 1921 after defeating Emmanuel Lasker who relinquished the crown to Kappa after a record 27 years the longest reign of any officially recognized world chess champion in history perhaps the most naturally talented chess player ever capablanca claimed that he had never opened a book on openings he was undefeated for 8 years from 1916 to 1924 a period which included the world championship match with lasker capablanca excelled in simple positions and end games Bobby Fischer described him as possessing a real light touch. He could play tactical chess when necessary and had good defensive technique. He wrote several chess books during his career of which Chess Fundamentals was regarded by Mikhail Botvinnik as the best chess book ever written. Emmanuel Lasker once said, "I have known many chess players, but only one chess genius, Capablanca." and uh, then Mikhail Botvinnik observed regarding Kappa Capablanca's play produced and still produces an irresistible artistic effect in his games a tendency towards simplicity simplicity predominated and in this simplicity there was a unique beauty of genuine depth Now in 1901 an exhibition match took place in Havana between a 13 year old Capablanca and Juan Corzo the champion of Cuba Corzo was a force in Cuban chess in his own right he won the Cuban chess championship 5 times and uh, he was a fine middle game tactician he was the strongest player in Cuba and uh, would certainly rank as a candidate for master class In the latter stages of the match considerable crowds gathered and attendance had to be restricted to ticket holders while others waited outside and uh, Capablanca's victory in this match created a local sensation This was game 11 of the match Capa had the white pieces and his opponent Corzo with the black pieces <clears throat> Now before we get into the moves of the game where i commit the sin of using stockfish uh, you know once again to analyze this game i must say that uh, i do this hesitatingly and only with the aim of learning in mind so as not to tarnish the memory of this beautiful game or uh, any other games that i analyze on my channel for that matter uh, you know uh, this game uh, took place well over 100 years ago and back in the day there were no stock fishes and alpha zeros and commodos and all those other chess engines we come across today and uh, even opening theory was going through a revolution back then and uh, you know chess was played more so from the mind and heart so to speak uh, which makes me wish to have lived at that time 
so I could enjoy this game with even more fascination. And uh, I still think that the human spirit and human intuition is far stronger than any machine created by man so far and will continue to be so. So with that said, let's get into the moves of the game. <clears throat> And Kappa began the game with d4 and Corso responded with d5. And after knight f3 and c5, we have the cross variation of the queen's pawn game, which is named after Orla Hermann Cross, who was a Danish chess master and analyst from the early 20th century. And this opening is played infrequently at master level chess these days and was a bit more frequent in the early 20th century. More common after knight f3 by white in this position is knight f6 with c4 and c6 where the game transposes into the modern Slav defense which is played more often at master level chess. But uh, c5 was played by Corso in the game and Kappa played e3 here. Also to take note of uh, after c5 is the line c4 and e6 by black, where the game transposes into the Queen's Gambit declined Taras defense, another infrequently played opening. Play can continue here with c takes on d5, e takes on d5, knight c3, knight c6, g3, knight f6, bishop g2, bishop e7, castling, castling, bishop g5, e takes on d4, knight takes on d4, and h6 as was played in a game between Yasser Siravan versus Gary Kasparov in 1983. And here white carries the opening initiative of almost half a pawn. And also possible after c4 here is d takes on c4, which is the Queen's Gambit accepted line called the Gunsberg defense. And e3 is the most common response here by white. And it should be noted that the Queen's Gambit is not considered a true Gambit in contrast to the King's Gambit because the pawn is either regained or can only be held with a disadvantage by black. Uh, but uh, e3 was uh, played by Kappa in the game. And uh, play then continued with simple developing moves. Knight c6 developing the Queenside Knight for black. b3 by Kappa e6, bishop b2, knight f6, knight d2, and c takes on d4 by Corso. If instead black uh, develop, develops its dark squared bishop by say uh, bishop d6, then it will lose a tempo on the bishop by d takes on c5, since the bishop will have to move again in order to capture the pawn. As such, uh, c takes on d4 first, and now e takes on d4 by kappa bishop d6 and bishop d3 both players are ready to castle here which is what they went for with the castling and castling and uh, kozu played knight h5 here with ideas of uh, the aggressive knight f4 and uh, kappa played g3 to prevent that maneuver also playable for white is uh, rook e1 allowing knight f4 temporarily and after bishop f1 b3 is on the way in order to kick the knight but uh, in the game kappa played g3 immediately and uh, black played f5 expanding on the king side and kappa responded with knight e5 discovering an attack via his queen on the loose knight as such, uh, knight f6 by black and now f4 by kappa, preventing black from advancing further with the f1 himself. And uh, bishop takes on e5 by Corjo, taking out white strong knight and uh, kappa recaptured the piece with f takes on e5, rightly keeping lines closed for the black queen. Because uh, if you go for d takes on e5 here, it allows a queen b6 check to black, developing the queen with tempo. And uh, after king h1, uh, the position is a bit uncomfortable for white here. Uh, knight e4 is coming, and uh, since the f pawn has already been pushed by white here, 
it has created uh, weaknesses in White's king side. Um, as such, f takes on e5 and knight g4 by Corzo, moving the threatened knight and uh, threatening knight e3. And uh, Kappa played queen e2 to prevent that, which was slightly inaccurate since it allows black knight b4. Better for white was uh, rook e1 controlling the e3 square. But uh, queen e2 by Kappa and uh, Corzo played an inaccuracy himself with queen b6, uh, missing knight b4. Uh, knight b4 here followed by bishop a3 and queen a5 still gives white an edge of almost a pawn. But uh, with queen b6, white has the initiative with uh, more than a pawn's worth of advantage here. So knight f3 by kappa maneuvering his queenside knight and protecting d4 which is uh, attacked twice. And uh, bishop d7 by Corzo, which was yet another inaccuracy. Better here uh, was again knight b4. But uh, with bishop d7, white's advantage grows to almost two pawns. So kappa played a3 here, preventing knight b4 altogether. And king h8 by Corzo, which seems unnecessary immediately for black. And uh, better was uh, rook c8, bringing the rook over to the semi-open file. But uh, king h8 has been played by Corzo in the game. And h3 by Kappa kicking the knight, which goes to a passive knight h6. Queen f2, knight f7 rerouting the knight. King g2 moving the king off the back rank. And g5 by black looking for counterplay on the king side. g4 by Kappa and knight e7. And uh, if you get uh, excited here and uh, go for f takes on g4, then this will be answered by a simple h takes on g4 with over six pawns of advantage to white uh, now that the h file has opened up much to your opponent's delight. So instead knight e7 and now queen e3 by white which was an inaccuracy and reduces white's advantage. Uh, better was uh, bishop c1 uh, where play can continue with rook g8, king h2, h6, bishop d2, a5, a4, king g7, rook b1, queen c7, h4, rook h8, king g2 and rook f8 with nearly 3 pawns worth of advantage to white. But uh, queen e3 uh, uh, was played by Kappa in the game and Corzo played rook g8 which was also inaccurate. Uh, better for black was uh, bishop b5 where uh, we have uh, bishop takes on b5, queen takes on b5 and if you get greedy as white here with knight takes on g5, some good old pawn grabbing, then comes knight takes on g5, queen takes on g5 and f takes on g4 with initiative to black due to the open uh, f-file and also the black queen eyeing this critical diagonal. But uh, rook g8 was played in the game by black. So now rook e1 by kappa and knight g6 by Corzo, missing out on an opportunity for equality with again bishop b5. But knight g6 and g takes on f5 by kappa which was a mistake since it gives the advantage to black. Uh, better was uh, either king h1 or king h2 uh, moving the king off the g file. So g takes on f5 by kappa and Corzo once again missed out on an opportunity for equality and played knight g4 check where uh, better was uh, simply e takes on uh, f5 followed by e6 but now comes f4 attacking the queen as such queen e2 rook e8 pinning the pawn bishop f5 knight d6 bishop takes on g6 rook takes on e6 knight e5 rook takes on g6 queen f3 queen a5 and c4 with an equal position 
but um, in the game uh Corso played knight f4 check and king h2 by a kappa although better here was uh, king h1 and uh, if black goes with knight takes on h3 here then f6 with almost two pawns of advantage to white but uh, king h2 by white and now knight takes on t3 queen takes on d3 e takes on f5 c4 and here corso blundered with queen e6 better was uh, g4 followed by e6 where black keeps an advantage of uh, one and a half pawns but uh, with queen e6 white's advantage jumps to over five pawns so now uh, c takes on d5 queen takes on d5 e6 and bishop b5 where we reach close to the position from the thumbnail and if you didn't look at that closely then white has an exciting continuation here against black and if you would like to spot the move then you can go ahead and pause the video queen takes on b5 a brilliant queen sacrifice by a 13 year old kappa and uh, black has no better choice but to accept as such uh, queen takes on b5 but now comes the crushing d5 check unleashing the fury of this monster bishop so corzo played rook g7 blocking the check but now comes e takes on f7 kappa winning some material back h6 by corzo making some space for the cramped king but now knight d4 attacking the queen and uh, corzo for lack of a better move played queen takes on f1 attacking his queen in return but uh, white has the initiative here and uh, if you try to save the queen with something like queen d3 uh, then white's advantage jumps to almost 10 pawns uh, play can continue here with knight takes on f5 queen c2 check king g1 queen takes on b2 but now rook e8 check is devastating for black um, king h7 and uh, with f8 the white lady rises like a phoenix from the ashes once again as such uh, queen takes on f1 was played by corso so now rook takes on f1 by kappa rook takes on s7 and rook takes on f5 which was slightly inaccurate but uh, still winning for white uh, better was uh, rook e1 where we have uh, f4 knight f3 with a discovered check king h7 d6 rook c8 king g1 rook c2 bishop d4 rook d7 rook e6 rook c6 bishop e5 with over four pawns of advantage to white but uh, rook takes on f5 was played by kappa the corso played rook takes on f5 uh, which is another mistake uh, king g7 followed by king g3 offers the most resistance according to stockfish in this position although it's still winning with over two pawns of advantage to white here but uh, rook takes on f5 by corso so now comes knight takes on f5 with a discovered check king h7 and uh, kappa here found the best move with a knight e7 which prevents the black rook from coming over uh, to the open e5 and uh, also tried rook f8 but uh, white's advantage keeps growing with over five pawns here and uh, play continued with king g2 h5 d6 pushing the d pawn closer to queening g4 h takes on g4 h takes on g4 and bishop e5 by kappa which uh, was unnecessary and uh, perhaps was played under time pressure better was uh, simply king g3 but uh, bishop e5 with advantage still to white king h6 d7 and rook d8 all right uh, you can pause the video again here if you would like to find how to progress with white in this position knight g8 check another exciting piece sacrificed by kappa which forces rook takes on g8 
and uh, if you don't accept the sack and play something like uh, king g6 here then comes knight f6 with uh, bishop c7 to follow which will eventually win the rook as such uh, rook takes on g8 but uh, now bishop f6 and uh, black has to give up the rook for white's pass pawn and here followed king g6 d8 queen and rook takes on d8 bishop takes on d8 and b5 another blunder by corzo um, king f7 or king f5 offers the most resistance according to stockfish but um, i guess it's safe to say that any resistance is futile here and uh, white is completely winning so b5 king f2 king f5 king e3 and king e5 and uh, corzo could have resigned here or uh, even uh, a few moves before but once again perhaps the element of time controls gave him hope and uh, you know one can only assume uh, you can make your own assumptions on this as uh, i will share the clock times at the end of the game with you so anyways kappa played along with king d3 king d5 king c3 g3 bishop h4 g2 bishop f2 a5 b4 king e4 bishop b6 king d5 king d3 and king c6 with uh, around 65 pawns worth of advantage to white if uh, that is of any relevance at this point bishop g1 king d5 bishop h2 king c6 king d4 a4 king e5 king b6 king d5 king a6 and king c5 and it was in this position that juan corzo finally resigned to the 13 year old uh, the clock times from the book the unknown capablanca by david hooper and dale brandreth first published in 1975 show kappa with 42 seconds left on the clock and corzo with a minute and 35 seconds so there we have it a famous victory by a young kappa and a well-deserved one too hope you enjoyed the game and the video till next time take care